Omori is absolutely terrifying, but not in the way you might expect. Five innocence letters come together to spell out the word Omori, which may or may not mean anything to you. In order to understand just what makes this a true horror experience, we first need to ask ourselves, what even is Omori? In the most basic explanation, it's a psychological horror role-playing game that alternates between the dream world and the real world. The style is often hand-drawn and cartoony to make you feel relaxed. The music is welcoming, the characters are friendly, and everything seems like it's gonna be okay. But do not get comfortable. Things are not as they seem. You play as this kid named Sunny in the Waking World, but his name's Omori when he goes to sleep. This is a game about friends and something horrific that connects all of them. It's a game about dealing with inner demons. It's a game about coming face to face with despair. The opening warning makes it very clear that yes, you're playing a cute, bright colored RPG, but you also need to be ready for some very serious stuff. Omori has been gradually growing its cult following, especially from longtime fans of Earthbound or Undertale. After years of anticipation, from Kickstarter, this released in December 2020. For the most part, it lived up to all the expectations. However, despite the incredible success and overwhelmingly positive reviews, it seems a lot of people are gliding over the question, why is Omori so terrifying? Well, there's a reason everyone has fallen in love with this, and the horror aspect is undoubtedly up there as one of the game's highlights. Let's see what makes it so special. One of the things that really makes the game stand out is how exactly you're presenting with the horror. Jump scares are few and far between in Omori, as the game doesn't rely on something quick and cheap to keep you unsettled. Because this is in the psychological horror genre, we dive deep into the human mind of our main character and how he views the world. He constantly finds himself back in white space, a recurring place with the bare essentials, one he retreats to when the pain of the real world is just too much. While it's true that jump scares can potentially work, depending on how they're used, the long-term unsettling feeling here is a lot more powerful to keep keep you on the edge of your seat in the scariest way possible. To understand what I mean, let's talk about the dream world. Bright colors, so much fun, and laughter in the air. Everything here is incredibly innocent, and the last thing you would expect is for this to be a game about death and darkness. On the surface, it looks like a fun kids game for anyone to enjoy, when in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. Anyone who sits down to play Omori is well aware of what they're getting into. You know that these vibrant visuals are a facade for what's really happening behind the scenes. Something is keeping Sunny down, making him want to retreat into this fictional world. His friends are seen with smiles, but throughout the game, his face in particular is devoid of expression. He's also the only one out of the bunch that's black and white, so what's really going on in his head? Despite the colorful environment, you know the darkness is lurking nearby. You always have one one feeling. Something isn't right. The majority of the story centers around doing fun stuff for dream characters, but that single feeling of anxiety never leaves because something can go wrong at any minute. Aside from the game's world drawing you in with its carefree style, we should talk about the power of choice. Throughout Omori, players surprisingly have a lot to do and explore. From the very beginning of the game, there are designated places to go for the course of the story, but at the same time, tons of different paths await anyone who chooses to take them. There are actually fully made areas that you don't have to visit for the main story, but are still there for anyone interested. Also, Omori presents its players with some choices that result in a few different endings. There's an entire chart for this, but this is all I'm gonna show you because spoilers. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the game lets you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Now you might be wondering, how does that relate to the horror aspect? Well, that can be found in various moments like this. You're plunged into the same cute battle system that's been a staple in the game since the start, but with one small twist. You have little control, and you can do absolutely nothing to damage the nightmare. Aside from a few skills barely keeping you alive, you're left in this state of powerlessness that's only so apparent because of the opposite being true for the rest of the game. You become so used to having a choice on what to do or where to go that Omori genuinely catches you off guard here. As something haunts our hero, he becomes afraid. It's hard for him to stay strong when faced with this, and the 
the abrupt change in gameplay allows the player to truly understand his feelings. The dream world is fun and exciting, but when this happens, it seems like there's no escape. This leads me to yet another reason on why Omori works so well to get in your head and never leave. It absolutely shatters all your expectations. Like I said before, players who start this are well aware that it's a horror game. That being said, they still become comfortable and believe in everything that the characters say. This feeling of complacency is what ultimately allows the scares to become even more meaningful because they're unexpected. This also relates to the major storyline of searching for a missing friend. Imagine Omori being a massive puzzle. At the beginning, you have a few small pieces to the mystery. As the game goes on, you start unlocking more pieces to this truth, but they're far more twisted than you might think. The bright facade of the dream world makes this a lot more creepy because it goes against your expectations. And eventually, when things do end up taking a massively dark turn and the environment changes to this, you just feel more unsettled than you already were. The game is structured in a way where even if you expect the unexpected, you still end up being surprised with what's thrown at you. What is the dark secret tying all these friends together? What happened in the past? How can Sunny defeat these feelings? It's hard to predict how events will play out, which is one of the best elements of success when it comes to horror. At the end of the day, Omori is terrifying. It visualizes the very real emotions of grief and anxiety, turning them into something anyone can understand. While this definitely isn't the first game to do that sort of thing, what Omori specifically brings to the table is unique. Although seeing despair portrayed in this way is scary, it's something all of us as people can recognize. And honestly, I only scratched the surface about it in this video. If you're interested in playing the game and seeing what makes it so special yourself, it's available right now on Steam. Just be warned, it's not for the faint of heart. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos, give a thumbs up, and comment below well, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.